When you are interviewing to apply for either medical or dental school, interviewers will want to test your professional judgment and your ability to act professionally. The Good Medical Practice Guidance has some really great outlines on what you should do for this sort of thing, but here we're going to talk about how to answer questions when they come up at interview. So in this video, we're going to look at the knowledge and definitions that you need to have, then what kind of questions come up and how they present themselves. Then I'm gonna give you a four step structure to tackle these questions and then finally I'm gonna tell you the things that you really need to do to put yourself in that top 10% to stand out. If you're watching the channel for the very first time, you'll see that I've done an entire interview playlist here and I'll be bringing out more. So every week we're gonna give you another video that's gonna get you ready for those interviews and other parts of the med school application. So make sure to check out the rest of the channel and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you're kept up to date with all the dental and medical school application news. So the GMC, the General Medical Council, the body that governs doctors, say that your duties come under four broad categories. The first is that of skills and knowledge and performance. That's saying that you can basically deliver care at a reasonable standard and you are fit to do so. The second is of quality and safety, so making sure that our patients dignity is respected, that they are treated fairly and we maintain that good quality service to our patients. The third thing is that they talk about communication, partnership and teamwork and that means that we are working with our patients, we are communicating exactly what it is that we're doing with them and it's a discussion rather than what it used to be in medicine which is what they call a pastoral form of care where you basically the doctor is the Holy, holier than now and they speak down to the patient and tell them what's gonna happen. Now it's more of a partnership and an agreement. And the fourth and final thing is that of maintaining trust. So we have to be honest and act with integrity because it is really important that the public has trust in doctors so that we as a profession can get the public to trust what we say so that they will go away and uh, undertake the treatments that we say or take the tablets, whatever it is, so that we can actually help them. So before we go on, there are some really key definitions that I want Want you to know because they will ask you specifically to define some of these words at interview so make sure that you're hot on all of these the first one is that of honesty which means telling the truth of course integrity which actually comes from the word meaning to be whole but in this context we're talking about being honest and having strong moral principles professionalism which is the set of standards that by undertaking the profession a doctor agrees to uphold encompassing the four responsibilities we talked about earlier dignity which means to be treated ethically and respectfully confidentiality, which means keeping information private, and finally, empathy, which is to relate to somebody's feelings in a given situation. So doctors themselves and the GMC need to ensure that all practitioners are upholding those standards so that the public maintain trust in the profession. So when you have this at interview, you will either have a discussion if you're sitting a panel interview, or if you're sitting in MMI, you may have anything from a discussion to a role play, or you might have a ranking scenario where you ask to prioritize certain elements and which one you would do first. First. So the kind of scenarios that you might get could be related to alcohol and drugs, where maybe someone shows up to work under the influence. There could be a honesty issue where somebody is telling lies or maybe they're cheating on an exam. You could experience somebody exhibiting unprofessional or illegal behavior. So maybe they are stealing something at work. And then finally, it could be a mistake that might have affected a patient's care and somebody who might not be willing to disclose that or are gonna keep that mistake to themselves and how you handle that situation. So I'm gonna show you how you would tackle one of those scenarios now, but what I want you to think of when you get a scenario like this, again, usually if it's MMI, you have a minute to think about the scenario, orientate yourself to the context. In that time, I really want you to think, what is the skill they are trying to test here? We talked about some of the duties and how those skills are related. What is it of those that they are trying to elicit from you here? So then once you've kind of understood that you want to try and demonstrate it the best way that you can. And I would go about this station in the following four steps. So firstly, whether you are discussing it or you are ranking it, identify the professionalism issue at play here. Is it somebody being dishonest? Is it somebody uh, doing illegal behavior? What is it exactly? And identify that you recognize that the key issue here is that. The second thing here is to then start talking about your answers. Now, it could be a what you would do ideally if it's a discussion and, and how you'd go about that and other options that you could do and why which one is the best. But you may be asked to rank possible actions um, in a scenario. So really what you want to do with that is talk through all of your possible uh, answers and which one you think is best. The third step, if you're in that situation, is then to 
discuss the best one, why it is the best, and always while you're doing this, you need to think out loud so that you can show them exactly your, your way of thinking and that you show them that you understand the principles that underpin why you're making the decisions you are. Then once you've picked the top one, you then go to the last one and then pick the remaining ones in the order that you feel. So you pick top and last and then order the others. Again, always talking through your rationale for why you're doing that. So then as you do the middle ones, by nature of them, they're going to be not completely good or they've been the top ones or they're not completely bad or they've been the bottom ones. So if they're in the middle, you need to weigh up the pros and cons of each. What are the good points about a certain course of action? What are the bad points? And then again, thinking out loud, tell them why you would put one above the other so that you get your final ranking order. An important thing to be aware of with this is that it's not always just about the ranking it's how you justify it so you may have maybe seen it or interpreted it a different way to how the examiner might have interpreted it but if you say well in this context if this is what's important and what matters and maybe patient safety is at risk if you think of it in this way then they will understand that you have prioritized the important values and they will kind of not penalize you for having something that's not exactly what their model answer is because you've shown justification by showing awareness in a different way. So earlier we mentioned the skills and knowledge that they might want to test. Well, there are really three main things that they are testing during these stations that you want to demonstrate. So firstly, they want to test your attitudes and professional behaviors, and that is a big part of this. Second, it will be all related to your understanding of the GMC and the good practice guidance and what makes a good doctor and your ability to implement that. And then the final thing, and it's a really important part, is that they're testing your resilience. Because what is going to inevitably happen when you have, whether it be a discussion in a panel interview, or whether it be your ranking, they will challenge and push back on your answers. And again, it is not necessarily that they're wrong. It's all about the justification. So if you have a reasoning for why you want to do this, don't be put off when they push back and challenge your answer. Just say, to take their argument on their merits and say, I understand why you're saying this because if you look at it from this way, this, this, and this are important, but actually I think that this is maybe more important and I want to, I think that I will stick to my answer because this, this, and this justification. So it's again, it's not, it's really a good way to not back down unless you have really been proven wrong and you're really like, okay, I completely understand and actually what you've just said makes me realize that what I've said is completely ridiculous. So don't stand by a really incorrect answer once you've been shown that it is that way. But equally, don't back down from a debate just because they've challenged you. Expect that and know how you're going to justify your argument and stick to your guns. One of the most important elements behind professionalism is that of patient safety. The GMC states that you must take prompt action if you think that patient safety, dignity, or comfort has been seriously compromised. So whenever you're doing the ranking questions, you should always put highest the ones that improve or prioritize patient safety. Another subject that might come up is that of raising concerns or otherwise known as whistleblowing. Like I say, as a medical student and as a doctor, it is your priority to preserve patient safety. So if you see anything that is compromising that, it is your duty to speak up. So there are times when you really should be raising concerns and it is your responsibility to do so. Some of those include behavioral issues, such as from non-attendance to aggressive behavior, or maybe not acting in line with good medical practice, whether they're breaching confidentiality, bullying, or maybe some social media issues. Dishonesty, whether they're lying or plagiarizing work. And finally, any other like drug and alcohol, ill health, or any criminal issues that people should be aware of that are potentially jeopardizing patient safety. Finally, I wanna tell you a little bit about what the GMC do. As we said, it's the General Medical Council, and they are in charge for a few things. The first is preserving the medical register of practicing doctors and those who are currently licensed and fit to practice. As we've said, they also set the standards for doctors, everything from their values, skills, behaviors, how they should act towards their patients. They're responsible for education and training. They set the standards and check those standards for medical schools to make sure that they meet the requirements. They also are responsible for revalidation. So once a doctor has been given their medical license, every five years they have to show evidence that they are practicing, continuing to improve, they are keeping themselves up to date, and all of those things to maintain their revalidation where they get their license reallocated for another five years. And the final thing that the GMC do is investigate any complaints and concerns. So that 
that is how they regulate medicine or medical practice in the UK. If you want to find out more about the GMC, I recommend that you check out this playlist here where we talk about all the interview uh, important bits that you need to make sure that you know really well. Otherwise, if you want to see an entire playlist for interview stuff, I recommend that you watch this. And also you can find out where you can do interview practice with either me or one of my team.